so the, the next question is, is, is modularity, is, is this prefabrication something that is only for the large cloud scale data centers or is this something that can be used in an enterprise context? Oh. Yeah, a great question, and the answer is yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, everybody. Um, you know, I, you see large cloud guys creating like hubs. For net, for them right now, the, the hubs are at Colos, right? Right. They're putting out those are their spokes. Um, but you know, some of them are looking at modular solutions. Colo guys are developing rapidly deployable modular solutions to create their hub and spoke environment. But inter, for enterprises, it's it's really a, it's a great solution, right? Some of them gave up half of their IT infrastructure because they moved everything to the cloud, or maybe they're half cloud, half colo. Um, and now they have new needs, and they're repatriating some of the stuff out of the cloud, and it, because it's latency driven and often, where do I put it? Another thing that we saw recently that's very, very interesting is, you know, the demand has been so great, and all the big boys are taking down all the available capacity, some enterprises are having a difficult time having colos even care about their business at a small retail because level. there's so much uh, competition yeah I mean, I mean i mean if you're a large colo operator and you can sell one guy 50 megawatts why go get 50 customers right right and and that's something that's very new right you look at the growth of microsoft and oracle and google and, and meta and all these guys they're taking down tons of capacity and i've got friends that i've known for 20 years that are telling me you know i used to be getting wine and dine quartered every day nobody's asking for my business because it's only 250 kilowatts or right. 500 kilowatts maybe it's a megawatt that's a real problem right because you know it is now a competitive advantage ah right? absolutely I mean, most of my career it was accounting finance billing important things but an expense right today it is a competitive differentiator so if there's new technologies, if there's new applications that help your business be a better user experience, help you drive value to your customer base, you can't wait. You have to deploy it, and modular is a great solution for that. And so it's not just a niche, though. I mean, because again, you look at it, and you know, modularity has been the housing industry for as long as I've been alive. So realistically, it started as a niche in housing. Yeah, now exactly. It's, now it's a, best practice. Precisely, and the same thing you think is, is the direction that they're moving in data centers. Absolutely, I mean, we're going to continue to build giant campuses, um, especially especially with generative AI. So you look at generative AI and how that works. Um, large learning models, hugely compute intensive, hugely storage intensive. Those 500,000 square foot, million square foot data centers, we're going to keep building those. Right. But you think about inferencing, and I've heard this a lot right here at the show, probably four or five people that I consider subject matter experts, you know, lear learning is going to get done at the cloud. Inferencing is going to be done at the edge. Right. Right. Because inferencing is very um, latency intensive. Latency. And sure. latency seems to be the big issue for any kind of right. task like that. Right. You think about 5G, what's right. it doing? Solving for latency. Right? right. So you think about what will drive the need for modular data centers and why do I have to have compute in all these different places? Um, you know, we have IoT, millions of data points. Do I want to ship all that back to the cloud? Right. No. I want to normalize it at my site because something saying I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, you know, times 15 million chirps. Doesn't make any you're sense to for protect network traffic that. back. Right. And it's just going to get thrown away. So if I if I can normalize data at the source, this goes to the cloud, this gets stored, this doesn't needs to be acted on, I act on it now, this doesn't need to be acted on, I can dump it. Makes a ton of sense and it's going to drive the need for more compute everywhere. Exactly. I mean, I've got a couple of the, you know, the, of the what I call the disruptors, you know, they view micro data center on every corner. Really? Right? Wow. Like the old days when I got in business in the 80s, if you had a T1 in your building, your business was more valuable. Today, right. it's going to be, if I have compute access, I built my building is going to be more valuable. Right. You know, and I could see where modularity would be a, a key factor for the edge. Because this is something that I always found interesting when we started looking at IoT and trying to define where the edge is. Because right. that's a long conversation we could have at any point. Yeah. But ultimately, it seems to be the place where that actions first need to be taken. Right. Where, the responsi where the response will actually affect something that point. And latency comes into play right. there. Um, so ultimately, this is the one thing that's odd about it is that we've been spending decades building hard, large, secure, highly redundant data centers, yeah. and now we just want to grab those things and put them out on the street. So that's where the question is, is how can we build the same level of security, same level of redundancy, the same yeah. level of protection on smaller or micro data centers or medium-sized edge? Well, think, think about cloud zones. You know, people used to be, I need to have, you know, run in a data center, run in a DR site, and, and some of the CSPs, they can fail a whole region and the workload just moves to the other region. 
Right. Right. And, and why would that not be true for edge sites? The software and the technology is there. Right. You know, if I've got 50 edge sites, you know, am I 40, am I, am I 1 plus 49 now? <laughs> I mean, theoretically, right? right? Yep, theoretically, yep. I have that, you know, and, and all of the things that are critical in mission critical space, we can do in a modular space. True. Right. And in fact, in some cases, especially versus legacy buildings, um, we can make it more efficient because we can match the pieces up. You know, think of how much enterprise compute ends up in spaces that weren't purpose built. Right. Right. There's a building. Oh, and, and it's all over the place. And it's all over the place. And, you know, now we've got AI coming. We've got generative AI coming. We've got IoT and 5G growing. Data tsunami is 10x. Right. 50x. I mean, I was just listening to one of the keynotes. The amount of data that's coming, so we're all going to have to deal with it. Data is only good if you can make it actionable, right? And right. It, you know, and all of those things. So, so, you know, if you're an enterprise user and you go to the colo, and here's another thing with the colos, um, and all of us are experiencing this, inflation's real. We all have to pass it through. Right. Right. Um, but supply and demand is real as well, and that also affects pricing models. Sure. So, so what used to cost X now is X plus 30%. That's very real. And, you know, maybe 20% of that is cost pass through, and 10% is, say, just supply and demand. Right. Right. And so for an enterprise user, you know, for him to go acquire land, Get permitting, do all those things. All of this. He's got to skid out in the, you know, he's got a place out in the parking lot. I can drop this or a warehouse. I can forklift it into. Right. I can bring in a mission critical facility that has best of breed power, best of breed cooling, best of breed management. Systems are matched. They're assembled and tested at the factory. Right. Right. So less installation on the uh, out at the site. And candidly, with the labor strike, labor shortage, all the good operators are getting the good talent. But right. Who are the other guys? The competition is everywhere. Right, right. And, and we can build, you know, we, we can bring uh, scale. Right. You know, maybe we're building you 10 modules, and that will show up in the costing model. Right. Right. And, and we do all of that work, and we test it so that shortens the commissioning at the other end. When we ship it out of the door, we know it works. Right. It right? doesn't mean freight guys can't mess it up, although we've got a lot of things that we can do to mitigate that. Absolutely. But, well, but we, again, it's already, it's already right. d designed, ideally designed, even though the fact that it can be put together as a modular construction. Right. It's, 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 it's Legos. Excellent. Right. And we can do as much or as little as they want, and we can modify it, and, and as, if their needs change, we can adjust it. You know. So right now we're at a point where we've got, I don't know, 10 or 15 reference designs. You know, different customers ask for different things. All of a sudden you see it from three different people, it becomes a standard. Right. Right. So we're trying to make it as simple as possible for people that don't want to be in the infrastructure business but need to have it to be able to deploy it successfully and be comfortable that they can sleep at night. So, and that brings up an interesting point is what are the drivers in, in terms of being able to uh, justify it? Whether it's our ROI, whether it's a, a, a turnaround time? So, so some of the stats, and, and they're evolving, and it, you know, everybody's getting better at what we're doing because efficiency is number one. Sustainability has to be part of the equation. Um, you know, we play well into the sustainability piece. We play well into the efficiency piece because, again, we can do it at scale. We can do it over and over. Um, we can take the labor picture out of it. The last number I saw was, you know, it's arguably 30% um, more cost effective. Right. It's certainly more faster. I mean, obviously, the constraint for everybody still is the supply chain sure. and hardware. But take hardware supply chain out, go back to normal days. You know, if, if somebody was going to try to build a legacy stick built site, you know, the best we're doing it in six months, the average might be 12 months, and normal was 18 months, right? Go back five years. Right, you know, but now people want load up in, in now. Right. Right, and the cloud guys can do it now, but it, there's a cost that goes with that. Right. You know, are my applications easily, you know, exportable to the cloud? We're learning what apps belong in the cloud, what ones don't belong in the cloud. Right. Right. And that's always going to be an ebb and flow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's just learning. Right. right. I mean, everybody in the beginning, I'm going to put everything in the colo, and the cloud came out. Oh, I'm going to put everything in the cloud. <laughs> and the hybrid world's not going away, and there's going to be more legs. It's going to be cloud. It's going to be colo. It's going to be enterprise. It's going to be edge, DR sites. It's going to be a whole ecosystem. At the end of the day, though, it all has to work. Right. Right. And and you have to be able to take all those mission critical, all those redundancies, all of those security issues, and whether it's 500 square thousand deal or a four by four, right, or a 40 foot container. You have to have those things. So I think there's great lace, lakes for the modular prefabricated space. You know, we're going to continue to build half a million square foot facilities. We're going to still have customers that want to build their own data center in their own building, you know, and just buy the equipment. But everything that we can modularize, everything that we can standardize, I can't go, 
I can't call on a customer with what we're trying to standardize everything. Right. We want to know what best practices are. We need it faster, we need it cheaper, and we need it more efficient. You know, and usually in the past you couldn't get all those things. Right. It's like which two do you want because you can't have all three. But modular allows that. It gets you to be a lot closer to being a reality. Yeah, you can, you can get that. I, I need it fast. I need it reliable. I don't want to think about it. Yeah. Right. And then you think about the new technologies that's coming in, and that's very disruptive to an enterprise user. Our colo customers and our cloud customers are very adept at the latest and greatest technology. But if you have a legacy site that was built for a one and a half to three kilowatt racks, and your CIO says, "Hey, I was on American Airlines, and this, you know, <laughs> it, you know, generative AI thing is saving companies, and we're going to do it, right?" And a, you know, Nvidia and all the other companies are making this awesome disruptive technology, and they need to have it in their building. That, that building was not built to accommodate a 30, 50, 100 kilowatt rack. No way. Maybe the better solution is, is I'm going to build a high density pod. Right. And I'm going to drop it in the parking lot and let that be my problem. Right. right. And you know right from the very beginning that it'll be able to handle the equipment. Yeah. Well, even even in some legacy colos, you know how they're do, man, managing um, high density racks now? They're mm. spreading the load. Oh, sure. I can't put a 10 in a row. No. Because put load. one here, put one there, wherever you've got the totally capacity. Totally not efficient, totally not optimizing the space. You know, I could put, you know, 10 racks in a container, 50 kilowatts a piece. You know, there's 500 kilowatts and drop it in your parking lot. Right. Right. And we, and we have remote management tools and monitoring tools and all those things that, that customers expect from us so that they can sleep at night. Yep. Well, this has been a fascinating conversation. Greg, it's been a treat to talk to you. I've enjoyed it very much. Excellent. Enjoy the rest of the show, and thank you all for tuning in today, and uh, we'll see you at later shows. Have Call a great day. Call your local day. bird of office. We can help. There you go. Thanks, guys.